Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks. Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Continuing Education, Certificate Programs, Certificate in Apparel Merchandising, CAPMA, BHC 05 Basics of Apparel Industry and Entrepreneurship, Block Minus 1, Unit, 1, Overview of Apparel Industry 1. 1 1.0, Objectives. Like food and shelter, clothing is a basic need. Indian textiles and apparel are famous for their fine craftsmanship. The apparel industry produces a wide range of garments and uses almost every type of textile manufactured. In this unit, we shall study the evolution, growth and features of the apparel industry. After studying this unit, you should be able to Understand the importance of textile and apparel industry. Understand the salient features of the Indian textile industry. Trace the origin of the apparel industry in India. Explain the growth of the Indian apparel industry, and Discuss the segmentation in the Indian apparel market. 1.1 Introduction The textile and apparel industry in India is one of the oldest and the largest manufacturing sectors in the country. The industry plays a pivotal role in building the economy of our nation as it contributes immensely through industry output and is a major foreign exchange earner for the country. According to the Rating Division of Credit Analysis and Research Limited, April 2019, the Indian textile and clothing industry contributes 2% to the GDP and nearly 15% to the country's export earnings. Also, you will be surprised to know that, after agriculture, it is the largest employer in our country, with a total workforce of about 45 million. Thus, the growth and development of this industry has a direct bearing on the improvement of the economy of our country. 1.2 Textile Industry The Indian textile and apparel industry is an enormous complex entity. The Indian textile industry is as diverse and complex as the country itself and it combines this immense diversity into a cohesive whole with equability. It provides a strong foundation for the apparel industry. Hence, before we study the apparel industry, let us briefly examine the salient features of our textile industry. The textile industry is extremely varied and covers a wide range of activities. It comprises of the hand-spun and hand-woven sectors at one end of the spectrum and the capital-intensive sophisticated mill sector at the other end, Fig.1.1. Figure.1.1 .1 Structure of the Indian Textile Industry Look at the screen for table content. Handcrafted techniques perfected over hundreds of years coexist with the latest technology and machinery. It is one of the few industries that encompass the entire supply chain, from diverse fibers to a large product base with substantial value addition at each stage. The varied activities in the textile industry include the production of natural raw materials such as cotton, jute, silk and wool, as well as synthetic filament and spun yarn. In addition, an extensive range of finished products is made. It is important to note that India is the largest producer of jute and the second largest producer of silk, cotton and man-made fiber and filament, globally. In fact, you will be amazed to know that, apart from China, no other country can boast of such strong and diverse base in textile fibers slash yarns. According to India Brand Equity Foundation, April 2022, the domestic market size of the Indian textile industry has reached 189 billion US dollars by 2021. A strong multi-fiber raw material base, a vast pool of skilled workers, flexible production systems, dynamic entrepreneurship together with vibrant design creativity have all contributed towards this growth creating a vibrant textile industry that has long been the mainstay of the Indian economy. The sophisticated, complex and varied structure of the industry, coupled with its close linkages with culture and multi-fiber raw material base, enables it to produce variety of products for varying consumer needs and preferences. 1.3 Apparel Industry we all know that most of the garments were either stitched at home or were custom made by the tailors till about a couple of decades ago. The emergence of clothing slash apparel industry is a comparatively recent phenomenon. Since a modest beginning in the 1970s and 1980s, it has grown into a gigantic industry spread over the country. Now the market is flooded with ready-to-wear garments for all ages and occasions, for men, women and children. From low-budget clothing, cheap, 
to high-end international brands all are available to the consumer. All of this has been made possible by the tremendous growth of the apparel industry in our country. The rating division of Credit Analysis and Research Limited reported that the Indian apparel sector is the largest segment of the Indian textile and clothing industry, accounts for approximately 50% of the total industry. Furthermore, it is one of the largest sources of foreign exchange flow into the country. As per the data published in the World Trade Statistical Review 2020 by WTO, India is ranked as the third largest exporter of apparel in the world after China, European Union, Bangladesh, and Vietnam. Before studying about this immensely large and diverse apparel industry, it would be worthwhile to briefly trace the origin and development of the ready-to-wear industry. History of ready-to-wear apparel the phrase ready-to-wear is a translation from the French term pré-importer and can also be known as off the peg or off the rack. It is universally accepted that a ready-to-wear item is characterized by two things standard sizing and finished being worn. The story of ready-to-wear started with the technological innovation of the power loom and the sewing machine. The power loom ensured adequate supply of fabric to the industry. On the other hand, the sewing machine first patented in 1830 by Barthélemy Thimonier, a French tailor, ushered an increase in the variety and volume of clothing items that could be produced. Over the next few years, improvements in the sewing machine by Singer, Elias Howe and others increased the efficiency of the machine, speeding up the mass production of clothing. Introduction of paper patterns by Ebenezer Buttrick in 1860, further aided mass production of apparel. Due to technological advances, military uniforms were the first ready-to-wear garments to be mass-produced during the American Civil War of 1812, World War I and World War II. The most important event in the evolution of men's ready-made clothing was the Civil War. At the beginning of the war, uniforms for the military were custom-made in the home of workers under government contract. However, as the war progressed, the demand for military clothing grew and to satisfy their requirements effectively and efficiently, manufacturers started setting up factories. For mass production of uniforms, it was necessary to develop standard sizes. Measurements of soldiers were taken and analyzed. The analysis indicated that certain sets of measurements were occurring regularly. These military measurements were subsequently used after the war, to develop the first commercial sizing system for men. As female fashion was still highly decorative and dependent on precise fit, ready-to-wear clothing for women emerged much later. The War of 1812, World War I and World War II introduced women in Europe and America to work outside of the home. In addition to work directly related to the war, such as nursing, women were also needed to take the place of the fighting men in offices and factories. The direct effect of this was that women's clothes began to make practical sense for the first time. During each war, there was a marked change in women's clothes that is best summarized as simplification. Women's clothes were simplified and made to work within the requirements of working in an office or factory. Women wore less jewelry and the lavish clothing of the Edwardian period, period from 1901 to 1910, dropped out. Hoops and corsets were removed. Military look crept into women's clothing bringing in military-style tunic jackets, belts and epaulettes. Skirts became shorter and colors became sober and muted. War crinolines were introduced which featured a bell-shaped skirt and a wide over skirt, figure 1.2. As the simplification of clothes increased, so did the ease with which they could be mass-produced. Figure.1.2 Women costumes during the War of 1812, World War I and World War II. Look at the screen for table content. Another byproduct of wars was that every time women were introduced to work outside the home, fewer went back to working just within the home. This decreased their time and ability to make clothes at home and further supported the developing garment industry by buying ready-made clothes. The time savings made it a good option to simply buy rather than make. Mass production by sewing machines led to price cuts. The quality of the articles increased and the cost between more traditional fine clothes and the mass manufactured began to be lace marked. It was in the United States and Europe that the development of mass production methods, mass markets and mass distribution of fashion merchandise was most rapid. These two markets and the inventions of mass manufacturing machines and practices influenced the whole modern fashion market.
although India's entry in the industry was much later, however, the rapid growth rate of the industry in recent years has been very dynamic and encouraging. This is amply illustrated by the rising figures of apparel market in our country today. The rapid expansion of the apparel industry in India is also exemplified by the growing list of fashion labels and retailers occupying retail space. 1.4 Growth of Apparel Industry in India The Indian apparel industry is growing like never before. The market size of ready-to-wear clothing and lifestyle apparel brands has witnessed a rapid increase and expansion. India's textile and apparel market size is expected to grow at a CAGR of 10% from 2019-20 to reach US $190 billion by 2025-26. There are a number of factors positively influencing the growth of the apparel industry like increase in job opportunities, rapidly growing middle class, increasing disposable incomes, changing lifestyles and consumption patterns rising number of tech-savvy consumers and an increasingly powerful manufacturing sector to name a few. These in turn have resulted in a radical change in the mindset amongst Indian consumers. Consumers are willing to pay for quality and premium products and spending on brands is not unusual. These new market trends have tremendously benefited the apparel industry. The spurt in growth has been further driven by the increased demand for ready-made apparel in semi-urban areas, increasing youth population and preference for branded apparel amongst consumers. Also, apparel manufacturers, retailers and merchandisers are undertaking high-level branding exercises across varied retail formats like exclusive stores, multi-brand outlets, department stores, discount stores and hypermarkets. Retailers are also increasingly adopting the franchise route for keeping up with the rapid expansion in the apparel retail sector. Over the past few years, the garment industry has been augmenting its capacities at various levels, widening its product mix, encouraging and adopting the use of innovative technology and exploring newer avenues of business. Due to technological advancements and use of sophisticated machinery, the Indian manufacturers are able to produce better quality and well-designed garments, which has not only given a boost to apparel exports in last few years but has also attracted investments in the sector by foreign players. However, inherent issues and challenges dominate the industry. The industry is still largely unorganized with a very low proportion of organized retail. In order to add to its share, the retailers are innovating by making the best use of available technology and human resource. The growing e-commerce market, increased internet penetration and increase in international retailers operating in India will certainly help boost the organized retail share of the Indian apparel market although relatively slowly. In a rapidly changing global economic scenario, with consequent changing dynamics of doing business, the apparel sector needs to identify scope for potential business ideas and overcome challenges by converting them into fresh opportunities. 1.5 Apparel Supply Chain in India Supply chain management is the amalgamation of key business processes from the original suppliers that provide products, services and information, that add value for customers and other stakeholders, to the end user. The apparel supply chain in India therefore consists of varied raw material sectors, spinning and extrusion facilities, processing sector, weaving and knitting sectors and garment manufacturing units that work through an extensive distribution channel. As mentioned earlier, this supply chain is one of the most diverse with respect to the raw materials and technologies used as well as products manufactured. Apparel manufacturing is the least capital-intensive section of the textile value chain. Hence it is characterized by low entry barriers i.e. it requires comparatively low initial capital investment for setting up business and is highly fragmented. It is also highly labor intensive and requires skilled, unskilled and semi-skilled laborers. Traditionally, the apparel industry has been divided in two sectors, namely, exports and domestic. In this unit, we will focus on learning more about the domestic apparel industry. The domestic apparel industry of India is labor-intensive and an industry, which supports the government's main objective of increasing employment in the country. The domestic apparel industry has the potential to grow at a good pace, refer section 1.4, 
and Indian retailers have developed a better range in terms of quality and numbers. It is estimated that there are approximately 65,000 garment units in the organized sector and the majority are small and medium-sized firms that are spread all over the country. Besides these, there are clusters emerging in regions such as Mumbai, Bangalore, Delhi National Capital Region, NCR, Kolkata, Coimbatore, Lviana and other cities. The key stakeholders in the distribution channel for the domestic market are wholesalers, distributors and a large number of small retailers selling garments and textiles. It is only in the recent past that large retail formats are emerging in big shopping complexes and malls in the form of single and multi-brand outlets. These large retail formats are instrumental in increasing the variety as well as the volume of products on display at a single location. The apparel retail sector is experiencing tremendous growth and development thus, making an increased contribution to the gross domestic product, GDP, in the country. Stringent regulations are therefore required to sustain its overall growth. Many big players, national and international, are entering the business, and competition in the retail sector is getting stiffer as they are testing and applying different retail plans and strategies in the market. Let us now study about the different segments of the apparel industry. 1.6 Segmentation in Indian Apparel Market Market segmentation is the process of dividing potential customers into smaller segments, based on certain characteristics such as age, income, place, lifestyle etc. The consumers within each segment share similar or related characteristics and respond in a similar way to various marketing strategies. The Indian apparel market can be segmented in three different ways. Segmentation by user category Broadly, the domestic apparel industry constitutes three segments, menswear, womenswear and kidswear. Unisex garments and uniforms are also significant components of the apparel product base. Menswear is the largest and fastest growing segment. In recent years, the women's wear category has witnessed a healthy growth in organized segment, especially in the lingerie and western wear subsegments. Menswear, women's wear and kids wear account for approximately 41%, 38% and 21% of the total market respectively, figure 1.3, according to the Rating Division of Credit Analysis and Research Limited, April 2021. Figure, 1.3 Indian Apparel Market Share by User Category Look at the screen for table content. Segmentation by use. A rough estimate of the segmentation of the apparel market by the analysts, on the basis of the use of apparel indicates that casual wear dominates the market and accounts for more than half, followed by sportswear, formal wear and ethnic wear. Segmentation by price. The apparel market can be segregated into largely three categories with respect to the price of the merchandise as follows. Low-end market, it is driven by large volumes and the products are mostly unbranded. A large number of manufacturers, mostly regional and local players, dominate the market. Mid-range market, it is characterized by quality products. The manufacturers are large and medium players. High-end market. It comprises of premium and super premium product categories. It is dominated by multinational companies and major Indian manufacturers. We will now examine the apparel market in accordance with the user category, which remains the most significant form of market segmentation. Menswear The urban male is in the phase of transition. Today men are experimenting with their style and silhouettes. Men can be seen wearing active wear in gym formal wear during office hours and smart casuals in the evenings. Not surprisingly, in order to attract the customers, many global men's brands are making special efforts in offering personalized products and services. While their efforts are on, our very own Indian brands are confident of retaining their market share. The competition amongst the domestic and international brands is increasing, leading to a spurt of growth in this segment. International brands like Cartier, Giorgio Armani, Kenzo, Prada, Gucci, Versace, Hugo Boss and Timbaland etc. have entered the Indian market and are giving tough competition to the traditional key Indian players like Aditya Birla, Arvind, Zodiac Clothing and Raymond etc. However, most of the international brands focus on luxury or premium segment, leaving the large upper mid and mid market for domestic players.
premium and luxury international brands cater to globetrotting customers, who are aware of these brands and understand the Western fashion trends. However, when it comes to the Indian markets, they lack the understanding of local tastes. Many menswear brands both national and international have shifted focus to tier 2 and 3 towns where demand for branded apparel is growing. Tier 2 and 3 towns are smaller cities and towns. Some examples of tier 2 cities are Ludhiana, Indore, Barodara, Mysore, Vishakharpatnam etc. And some examples of tier 3 towns are, Roorkee, Wailur, Etowah, Jamnagar etc. The functioning of Indian menswear retail has definitely changed since the entry of international brands. It has become more consumer-friendly and organized. Due to stiff competition the brands have to keep innovating to improve customer experience. Some of the key domestic players in menswear are, Aditya Birla Fashion and Retail Limited. Aditya Birla Fashion and Retail Limited is a part of Aditya Birla Group, one of the leading branded apparel companies and a premium lifestyle player in the retail sector in India. It is a market leader in the segment of menswear and has introduced premium international labels. The company's brand portfolio is diverse and varied. It comprises of product mix that ranges from affordable, mass market to luxurious, high-end styles. They cater to every age group, from youth to men and women. The company is defined by its varied brands, Louis Philippe, Van Heusen, Alan Solly and Peter England, all market leaders within their segment. It has a strong presence in the market and has an exclusive network comprising more than 2,700 stores, covering 7.5 million square feet of retail space, as on March 31, 2021. Apart from these, the company also retails through more than 18,000 multi-brand outlets and 5,000 department stores. Raymond Apparel Raymond Apparel is one of the largest branded apparel companies in India. It is known for some of our country's most prestigious brands viz. Raymond Ready to Wear, Park Avenue, Color Plus, and Parks. The company launched its first ready to wear label Park Avenue in 1986, which catered to men's formal wear market. This was followed by Parks in 1999 to focus on the growing market trend for smart casuals. The company acquired Color Plus as a part of strategic expansion plans for their ready-to-wear business and positioned it as a high-end casual wear brand. Subsequently, it launched Raymond Ready-to-Wear to cater to the popular price segment. Arwind Lifestyle Brands Limited Arwind is another leading menswear manufacturer in India. Arwind Mill was established in 1931. Arwind has a large brand portfolio that includes Arrow, Lee, Nautica, Calvin Klein. Gap, Tommy Hilfiger, Flying Machine, U.S. Polo Association, IZAD, True Blue, Aeropostal, Ed Hardy, Gantt. Their product mix is diverse and comprises denims, shirting, carcass, knits, and voile dot for some of our country's most prestigious brands viz. Raymond Ready to Wear, Park Avenue, Color Plus, and Parks. The company launched its first ready to wear label Park Avenue in 1986 which catered to men's formal wear market. This was followed by Parks in 1999 to focus on the growing market trend for smart casuals. The company acquired Color Plus as a part of strategic expansion plans for their ready-to-wear business and positioned it as a high-end casual wear brand. Subsequently, it launched Raymond Ready-to-Wear to cater to the popular price segment. The company began export of garments in 2001 when it set up factories for manufacturing shirts in Bangalore. They supply garments to Dockers, Gap, Next, eSpirit, FCUK and many others and have grown hugely in recent years. WLS WLS, a chain of nationwide exclusive specialty stores, was established by ITC's Lifestyle Retailing Business Division. The product lines at WLS comprise classic workwear, relaxed wear, evening wear and fashion accessories. WLS is India's first mainstream apparel brand shifting to 100% natural, from fabrics to trims. All garments will be fully biodegradable made up of natural fibers. Apart from the above, other prominent brands, which also enjoy a good position in the market, include Zodiac, Monte Carlo, Oxenberg, Cantabile etc. Women's wear. It is interesting to note that traditionally, the overall proportion of women's wear in the world is much higher whereas in India, the men's wear constitutes a higher portion. 
However, the women's wear segment is now becoming increasingly popular across Indian cities. According to an assessment by Clothing Manufacturers Association of India, although traditionally Indian women wore more unstitched apparel like sarees, the trend is now changing in India. Women wearing sarees are gradually changing over to salwar kameez and those wearing salwar kameez are now changing over to western outfits. Thus, a rapid growth rate is anticipated in the women's wear segment. Women's wear market largely comprises of ethnic wear and contemporary western wear. Both organized as well as unorganized players cater to this market. A large spectrum of Indian brands is retailing contemporary western wear. For example, Raymond's brand Park Avenue Woman launched a complete range of premium business wear for professional working women of today. WLS also offers premium wardrobe for women through its various collections. Cotto's brand Le Femme offers a wide range of casual and formal wear for women, which includes apparel like t-shirts, denims, tunics, party wear etc. Other major players like pantaloons and shoppers shop also have a significant market presence. Besides the above, branded ethnic wear have found a special place in women's wardrobe in recent years and retailers are leaving no stone unturned to cash in this trend. Traditionally, the ethnic wear market has been dominated by unorganized retailers. The burgeoning growth in this segment is attracting major apparel retailers, such as Shoppers Stop, Future Group's Pantaloons, West Side of Tartar's Retail Arm, Trent and W Stores which are also aggressively expanding into tier 2 and 3 cities. Even new entrants like Reliance Trends are focusing on this segment. Kids wear. The kids' clothing market in India is growing up and according to industry experts it is expected to grow at a CAGR of 8.1% to reach 1,45,445 crore by 2027 from 66,904 crore in 2017. However, the figures in this industry cannot be compared across research organizations because of definitional issues. Some take kids as those under age 14, others prefer age 16 and below. However, the numbers are comfortable enough for manufacturers and retailers to roll out big plans. For a long time, much of the market had been strictly utilitarian. School uniforms accounted for some 30% of the total market. It is followed by t-shirts slash shirts. 26% for boys and ethnic wear, 23% for girls. Today, however, children have become brand conscious, spending power of parents has increased and peer pressure is growing leading to growth in this sector. Many international brands have entered India recently, due to the growing market opportunity in this segment. Armani Jr., Gig Gamoj R, Bamboo Baby and Main are a few brands that represent the high end of the market. Other global retailers whose brands have been available in India, though not through exclusive outlets, are also thinking expansion. These brands include Pinkapal Leno, Fendi Kids, Miss Blue Marine, Baby Dior, Burberry, and Zara. These brands are much more expensive than their Indian competitors. Domestic brands having a significant market share include Cat Moss, Lilliput, Guinea, and Johnny, Benetton, and Mothercare. Indian fashion designers are eyeing the premium segment. Big business houses are also examining the opportunity. This includes the pantaloons chain and Mohindra retail. However, most of this segment is still dominated by the unorganized sector. A major challenge for manufacturers and retailers is to get the product mix right. Check your progress. 3. 1. What are the chief centers of apparel production for the domestic market? 2. Enlist the parameters for the segmentation of the apparel market in India. 3. Give the full form of the following abbreviations, CAGR, IMG, KMAI, GDP. 1.7. Conclusion. After reading this unit, you are now familiar with the fact that the textile and apparel industry in India plays a pivotal role in building the economy of our nation. You have also got a quick glance at the structure of the Indian textile industry the evolution of ready-to-wear apparel and the various factors positively influencing the growth of the apparel industry. Segmentation on the basis of user category, use and price pose both opportunities and challenges to the national and international brands who are thinking of expansion in India. 1.8. Let US sum up. 
In this unit you have studied about the importance of the textile and apparel industry in India and its immense contribution to the Indian economy. It is the largest manufacturing sector and a major foreign exchange earner. The textile industry is a diverse and complex entity with extremely wide range of activities. It encompasses the entire supply chain from production of diverse fibers to a large product base with the substantial value addition at each stage. The growth of the apparel industry in India began in the 1970s and 80s and has intensified in the last few decades. Apparel industry in India is very diverse with a wide range of ready-to-wear available to consumers. Ready-to-wear is a translation from a French term pret-a-porter and is characterized by standard sizing and a garment that is finished to wear. Mass production of ready-made garments resulted from technological developments like sewing machine and power loom and the introduction of paper patterns. Military uniforms were the first ready-to-wear apparel to be mass-produced during the American Civil War, World War I and World War II. Apparel production in India is growing at a rapid pace due to rising incomes, changing lifestyles and consumption patterns of consumers. The apparel supply chain comprises varied sectors of the textile industry supporting the garment manufacturing units that supply an extensive distribution channel. The apparel industry traditionally has been divided into two sectors, namely domestic and export. The apparel industry can be segmented on the basis of the following parameters, user category, use and price. According to user category it can be further divided into menswear, womenswear and kidswear. Segmentation by use indicates relative volumes of casual slash formal wear. Price is a determining factor for segmenting the apparel industry in the low, medium and high-end markets. Men's wear accounts for 41%, women's wear 38% and kids wear 21% of the total apparel market. All three sectors are characterized by the presence of international and national brands. Major domestic multi-brand companies include Aditya Birla Fashion and Retail Limited, Raymond Apparel, Arwind Lifestyle Brands Limited, and WLS. The women's wear segment caters to the demand for both ethnic and contemporary western wear. Kids wear segment is growing significantly with increased brand consciousness among children and disposable incomes along with peer pressure. 1.9 Keywords And spun, spun by hand. Hand woven woven by hand. Spindlich, total number or capacity of spindles in a mill. Hoops and corsets, a hoop is a garment worn in various ways to hold the skirt whereas a corset is a garment worn to hold and train the torso, upper part, into a desired shape. Wokrinlin, wide, calf length, full skirts that became popular during World War I. CAGR, compound annual growth rate, CAGR is a measure of growth over multiple time periods. It provides one rate of return when the value of something changes at an uneven rate over a certain period of time. Products mix, a total range of products offered by a company. Thank you for watching, we will see you in next video with next chapter. Gross Domestic, the total value of goods produced and services provided product in a country during one year.